All right, let's talk about one more type of research method, and that is the correlational study. You already know that experiments are really special, and the reason an experiment is special is because it can determine cause and effect. That would <laughs> allow you to realize that correlational studies do not do this. Generally speaking, correlational studies do not determine cause and effect. They only determine if two variables are related. And two variables that I've measured in the classroom or gotten student estimates about and looked at in an informal way are height and weight. And they are inevitably correlated for members of large populations. Generally, and thank goodness there are exceptions to this or it would be a very dull world, when you look at height and weight, large groups of people, you're going to see that as a general rule, when height is increased, so is weight. And as height is decreased, so is weight. So they seem to be related for people in large populations. Does not mean that everybody who's tall weighs more and vice versa, thankfully. So yeah, now ask yourself, does your height cause your weight or your weight cause your height? No, this is not a causal relationship between these two variables. They are related to each other, but not necessarily in a, in a causal fashion. And a correlational study lets you examine whether or not two variables are related to each other. Before we begin talking about correlational studies in detail, I want to introduce you to the correlation coefficient. This is something that you need to know. A correlation coefficient is the result of conducting a correlational study, and what it does is describe the degree of relationship between two variables, the degree to which they are related. And what you need to know, and you don't necessarily understand it yet, I know, is that correlation coefficients are represented by a lowercase r, and that the value of a correlation coefficient is going to be between minus 1 and positive 1. So minus 1 is less than or equal to the correlation coefficient r, which is less than or equal to positive 1. So now let's get into correlational studies. I am showing you what is called a scatter plot, which is a way of visualizing the results of a correlational study. Scatter plot, all one word, and probably named this way because a plot is a graph. This is a graph and there are dots scattered all over my scatter plot. So looking at this scatter plot, you have height on the vertical axis ranging from four feet to six and a half feet, and you have weight across the horizontal axis with weight in pounds ranging from 80 to more than 240. I made up these data. Let's say that they represent data from a group of preteen females. And each dot on my scatter plot represents information for one person. So on the bottom left, you've got a dot, and it's right above the 80, and it's slightly above the, the four feet height. Up on the top right, you have data for someone who is close to six feet tall and someone whose weight is above 240 pounds. So. I could, and I've done it in the classroom before, ask everybody to go up to the whiteboard, back then it was chalkboards, sorry, and put the scatter plot up and everybody has to put a dot in the part of the scatter plot that represents their height and their weight. And I almost always see these results when I do this. I haven't done it for a long time, but it was pretty consistent. What you're seeing is that the dots on the scatter plot form almost a line beginning in the lower left of the plot and going up to the upper right of the plot. And if I were to draw a best fitting line between amongst those dots, I could do it pretty easily and it would be an ascending curve. And it shows that in a population, when people's heights are greater, so are their weights. When people's heights are lower, so are their weights. Not something that holds true for everyone, shouldn't, but there you go. We call this a positive correlation because as one variable goes up, so does the other, and as the first variable goes down, so does the other. Height and weight go up and down together. 
And in the top right of the screen, I've shown you a potential, I made this up, but it's probably what you would see, a correlation coefficient of positive 0 0.95. And I don't want you to have to calculate correlation coefficients for me in a general psychology class, but I want you to be able to look at a correlation coefficient like this one and interpret it for me. Tell me what it means. And here, there's a positive sign. And the only thing that positive sign tells you is that it's a positive correlation. Two variables going up and down together. Looking at the value of the correlation coefficient, 0.95, it's pretty close to 1. That means it's a strong correlation. When a correlation coefficient is close to either minus 1 or positive 1, that indicates that there's a strong relationship between variables and there's a strong correlation. So we've talked about positive correlations, and you'll recognize one if you see it on a scatter plot. You will be able to recognize it if it is shown as a correlation coefficient. But that should lead you to speculate that there are, in fact, negative correlations. There are positive correlations and negative correlations. And in a negative correlation, as one variable increases, the other decreases. And as the first variable decreases, the second variable increases. They're kind of opposite, doing opposite things of each other. So here's an example of a scatter plot showing a negative correlation. And I'll be honest, I've collected data about this in the classroom before, and it never actually works out. But let's assume this does work. I mean, it makes intuitive sense. We're looking at GPA, grade point average, on the vertical axis, ranging from zero, which is very sad, or someone hasn't taken any courses yet, all the way up to 4.0, the maximum. And on the horizontal axis, you're looking at hours of TV watching per week. And, you know, it makes intuitive sense that when people watch a lot of TV, they're not studying, and so their grades would be lower. And then if people are not watching television, then they're studying and their GPAs are higher. Let's assume that's the case. So looking at the scatter plot, again, you're seeing dots on the scatter plot, and each of those dots represents information for one person. Let's take a look at the person's information up there on the top left next to 4.0. Obviously, they've got a very high GPA. Are they watching much TV each week? No, it's down around zero. Looking on the bottom right, there's another dot. That's someone who's watching more than 40 hours of TV a week. Do they have a very high GPA? No, it looks like it's below one. So I could draw a best fitting line through these dots on my scatter plot, and I get a descending curve. And this is showing that these two variables, GPA and number of hours watching TV per week, are correlated. They're strongly correlated. So yeah, this is a negative correlation. As one variable goes up, the other goes down. As watching TV goes up, GPA goes down. And as watching TV goes down, GPA goes up, in this illustration anyway. Looking at the correlation coefficient, I'm showing a possibility of a correlation coefficient for this situation on the top right of the screen. Lowercase r represents correlation coefficient, and it's minus 0.89. So looking at that minus sign, the only thing that minus sign tells you is that this is a negative correlation. Two variables are correlated. One goes up, the other goes down, and vice versa. That's all that minus sign tells you. Looking at the value of the correlation coefficient, 0.89, it's pretty close to 1, so this is a strong correlation. So we have positive correlations and negative correlations. Isn't that the whole story about correlations? No. The vast majority of variables that you might examine and see if they're correlated with each other are not going to be correlated. They're not going to be related. And so we need to talk about what happens to the scatter plot and what happens to the correlation coefficient when there's no correlation or no relationship between two variables. So now we're looking at the relationship between grade point average, ranging from 0 to 4, and the number of letters in somebody's name. And so, again, on the scatter plot, each dot represents information for one person. You have some people with short names and high GPAs, and some people with short names and low GPAs. You have some people with long names and high GPAs, and some people with long names and low GPAs. In fact, these dots are sort of randomly scattered around my scatter plot. 
This suggests that there is no relationship or no correlation between these two variables. Let's look at the correlation coefficient. I've actually given you two possibilities here. I could end up with correlation coefficients like either one of these. First one, r equals positive 0 0.09. That positive sign just refers to a positive correlation, but because the value of the correlation coefficient, 0 0.09, is so close to zero and so far from minus one or positive one, there's no correlation. Or I could end up with a correlation coefficient like the one below it, minus 0 0.01. Here, it might have a minus sign, and if it were a strong correlation, that would indicate that it's a negative correlation, but that's not the case here, because 0 0.01 is very close to zero and very far from positive one and negative one. So this is a weak correlation. So now you can do it. If you're trying to interpret a correlation coefficient, first look at the sign, positive or negative. All that does is tell you if it's a positive correlation or a negative correlation. And then look at the value. How far is it from zero? How close is it to one or minus one? And that tells you the strength of the relationship or how related two variables tend to be.